So now this is the final part of my uh, breakdown of the TGS conference. The PS4 part is going to be the longest. Anyways, first thing to talk about in the PS4 conference is um, the release date and the price of the PS4 in Japan. In Japan, the PS4 is being released uh, February 22nd to the 14th, which is significantly later than the Xbox One in certain countries in the West, and as significantly later than the West and Europe getting the PS4. It's about December, January. It's about two, three months wait. I, I'm not good at math. I think it's two months. January, no, November, no, December. January, yeah, it's about three months. Uh, the prices you can see is uh, 41,979 uh, yen for the regular and 46,179 yen for the PlayStation and Camera Bundle. Uh, the regular price is $422 with tax, which is about what we would pay in America. And the Camera Bundle is significantly cheaper, at four, is a, less than we would pay in America. It's 464.28 if we were to buy the camera and the PlayStation separately. Uh, the reason they said there's a delayed release date is to make sure that there is uh, that Japan has content that's exclusive for Japan and they have other countries content available for launch. Um, they say that the Japan needs to have its own, uh, not that it needs to own but that, uh, content, but that a lot of the uh, American, uh, I mean Western games, uh, they're uh, they're they're further ahead on their uh, making their game. So then a bunch of the games are coming out launch day here, or even a little after launch, are gonna come out uh, that February twenty second, two thousand fourteen uh, <coughs> date. Like I said, the reason they said they're doing it is so that Japan is that the Japanese gamers will have a bunch of content for just Japan and also content from other countries because Japanese they say Japanese developers are a little behind on that. They also talk about like I said. Uh, I don't know if I said this, but they talk about it like how uh, there'll be some game, like a bunch of the games that are available for launch here will be available for launch there, like Killzone, Drive Club. They also get the PS Plus edition, uh, and they also get uh, some of the indie games like Resogun, Octodad, and so on, as you saw in the little picture above. Now, although Japan has to wait, you know, significantly longer to get their PlayStation 4, so they get these first limited packs, which comes with Knack for free. What, I don't know, it's, it's very confusing the way it's worded. It sounds like you get an extra one-year warranty, but maybe in Japan they don't have to include warranty, so you just get a one-year warranty in general. But I hope that there would be a situation, at least in Japan, which sucks for them in general. But otherwise, that means that we could be getting a sort of a gimped warranty in America, if that's so special about that. They're saying that it's a special feature. But like I said, you get Knack for free, and in a little bit, they're going to... And also, with this first limited pack, you can get that camera bundle and also get Knack for free, too. It's a little confusing, but from what I've seen, that's that you can do that. Uh, another thing that's... um. Interesting, uh, and then well, not interesting, but they start talking about some knack some more, and they talk about how to compare to Crash Bandicoot and how the Mark Sinry guy who's making the PS4 also helped uh, make uh, Crash uh, Bandicoot and some other platform games like Ratchet and Clank. And it sounds like the person says Ratchet and Crack, which I thought was funny. But anyways, um, uh, knack will apparently also one thing we learned about knack is that it apparently will have support characters to help you know people who are younger and older because they said they want to make it a game that can be hard for you know. Uh, not hardcore gamers, but, you know, regular gamers who, you know, aren't casual. And then there will also be, like, support characters so you can help your kid. Uh, you know, if your kids are playing, they can have some help with uh, Robo Knack. And there was a new promotional video. It shows uh, uh, Knack being shown off and Knack and everybody goes inside, like, the Goblin Kingdom area. And the Goblins start attacking because they're vengeful people and they hate humans for whatever reason. And apparently Mankind needs Knack to evolve according to some sort of ancient hieroglyphic scribble stuff. And uh, they also talk about, um, also you can start pre-ordering these uh, PlayStation 4 first limited pack in Japan. Uh, you can pre-order around, uh, I think it was October 5th, they said, is when the people are able to start pre-ordering it from all the retailers. Uh, after that, they... Uh, they go to another uh, scissor reel, and uh, there's also they talk about the playroom again, but it's nothing really new or special we haven't seen before. And they talk about DLC being made, which has already been announced that Double Fine is making DLC for playroom, and it's coming with every PS4 and blah blah blah. Uh, so uh, I'm just gonna let go on, let the scissor reel play, and you can guys can enjoy that. <laughs>
Um, after that sizzle reel, uh, they announced that uh, Final Fantasy XIV Realm Reborn, the beta test will begin uh, February 22nd, 2014 for the PS4 version. On that, uh, well, that's basically the Japanese launch date. They don't say if the beta test will be outside Japan, but they just say that's the beta day. I assume it will probably be outside Japan, but anyways. Also, they announced that the PS3, if you have a PS3 version of Final Fantasy XIV, you get the PS4 version for free, which is a pretty nice deal. Uh... I only have the PC version, which I'm still waiting for. I have. That's another issue for another day I'll talk about. But for now, uh, there's just I want to give you that re a realm info about a Realm Reborn Final Fantasy XIV. Also, there's a, another Watch Dogs trailer. I believe we've seen this one before because it seems similar. The uh, audio is Japanese, which I find really weird because another, there's another part of the trailer later on that's uh, in English. I just found it to be a really weird situation where... You know, part of it is in, most of it is in Japanese and a little part at the end extra is English. I don't think we've seen this part before, so I'm going to keep that part in this video real quick and just skip to it. Hi. Oh, fuck. Jordy, who are they? Well, they live here. What happened? Well... Security in these buildings is pretty tight. So people like this feel nice and secure living way up here. I mean, these people just had a, a simple chain lock on their door. I guess they want to have a good look at the pizza guy before they open it all the way. All right, fine. Sure. So about this problem. Well, that's why I brought the bolt cutters. He opens the door this much. There's a chain right there. I slip him in and snip, and guess what? It's not the pizza guy. Jordy, the problem. Let's deal with it. We are dealing with it. We're in the midst of solutions here, Pierce. You don't appreciate what I do for you. You don't realize how much I take care of you, do you? Really? Yeah. Well, do me a favor. Let's get on with it. How much time do we have? Well, as much as we need. After uh, Watch Dogs, they start showing uh, they start showing gameplay for Psycho Break, which is the Japanese name. Well, it's you know technically English, but whatever. Of uh, Evil Within, uh, you're a police officer. You're called into a uh, sort of situation. You can go inside. You see some. You see like some horror creepy stuff. Some ghost thing kills all the police officers there, and then you get like knocked out by it. And then at the end, and just some more trailery, survivory stuff. I didn't. I don't really follow horror games, uh, so I'm just gonna let the rest play out for you guys in case this hasn't, or I'm, I'll let some play out for you in case this hasn't or hasn't been seen. So enjoy. Uh, now in this part, Sony lend the floor to somebody from Koi uh, Tecmo. Koi Toy. I can't. Koi Tecmo. I uh, Tecmo Toy. I can't remember the name now. It's uh, I, I'm having brain farts. I'm really tired of having any sleep because I've been trying to get this up as soon as possible. But the people who make Dynasty Warriors Seven. A uh, Dynasty Warriors. They're making Dynasty Warriors Seven Empires Edition. They're releasing it on the. Uh, PS4, the day it launches, it seems to be, and uh, they just talk about how the graphics have been improved here and there, and this looks better, this looks better, and it looks good from what I've seen, it looks uh, really good, and I'll uh, show and cut through little parts so you can see w what is what they looks like, and the improvements, because people who have actually played Dinosaur Warriors 7, I've played some of them a while ago, will probably have a better idea than me. And now Sony is uh, lending forward to somebody from a Nintendo. I think his name is Toshihiro Nagushi. Uh, this is a gameplay for a uh, game called uh, Yakuza Ishin. Uh, it takes place November. Well, the video that is in this, I'll show a little bit of it. it takes place November fifteenth in the Edo period. Uh, Basically, in this video, I'm going to show little bits and pieces, but basically in the video, uh, is uh, there's some samurai meetup, they go inside a place, they kill a bunch of people, they say it's the end for this guy, then your character, because your camera guy goes up and he uh, 
kill somebody who apparently has a gun, even though this is, says the Edo period, which I'm pretty sure was in the past, before guns. Well, they has a revolver. Uh, maybe I don't know guns, but I don't think a revolver was mentioned in that early of a time. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, uh, and then some guy appears in, next to a window and says someone was supposed to change the area, but was defeated by Alter Gyo, Al Someone who was supposed to change the area, but was defeated by Alter Gyo, who wasn't supposed to exist. Um, it apparently would take place in Kyoto. Uh, Ryomo Sakimoto is the main character. Um, it will. They say they will have popular characters returning from uh, previous games. Uh, they say they wanted to focus on the human drama. It's coming on the PS3, the PS4, and the PS Vita, and it will have crossplay with the Vita. Uh, and it's coming the launch date of the PS4 on um, February 22nd, uh, 2014. And they say that they'll show more of this game uh, later on through uh, TGS. I don't know if this is super relevant to people because I'm not hip to sort of all the Japanese culture and the popular voice actors or whatever, but apparently some guy named Katsunori Takahashi will play ha Hanpeta Takechi, and he's really happy with the role. Just thought I'd mention that. Relevant if it's not, we'll only took a couple seconds. Next game is published by Gung Ho Online Entertainment and is uh, developed by Grasshopper Manufacturer. It's called uh, Lily Bergamo. Uh, the game will come out in 2014. Uh, they may not release any more details at TGS. It's a very short teaser. Just what you see is what you get. Really, nothing else is announced really about it. Uh, in the trailer, also the gr they say it says uh, girl fate betrayal. People in lower positions defeating people in higher positions, and then the I assume the main character, because it's a girl's voice, says, uh, uh, wants to take, wants to take, like, somebody's life, so I assume that means get revenge on somebody, uh, they, the people who, the two speaker people who describe the game, they describe it as a, uh, supreme, extreme action game, and they emphasize their strength on, uh, making female characters, and they say that the reason they make their female main characters, uh, look pretty, which they apparently have done in the past, I'm not really sure, I don't think I've played any of the games I've heard of Grass Man Hopper Manufacturer, but I really haven't played any of the games. But uh, anyways, uh, they say that they emphasize their strength on making female main characters, and they make them pretty, like act, like an actor, so we can enjoy the game and the whole entire experience more. They also mention some, uh, companion feature that they want to, uh, add with, uh, smartphones. Uh, they don't mention the PSV at all, but they tell you want to use the companion feature of the smartphone to like use your data connection and be able to play on your smartphone. They don't say if it's going to be sort of like a uh, companion experience on your smartphone, you know, like maybe some sort of mini game s thing, or if you'll be able to play like a full game sort of thing. They don't really say that. Uh, I don't know. If, I think I said that may or, more details may or not be more details may or may not be released at TGS. They were not very specific on that. And just in case I forgot, it has a release date of uh, sometime in 2014, but that's it. The next game is made by uh, Kadakawa Game Studio, which apparently is a branch of Kadagawa Game. Uh, we're making some sort of dark fantasy uh, SRPG simulator. Uh, it's like a dark medieval sort of Dark Souls-esque environment is what it reminds me of. It's just the first thing that comes to mind. It's called a uh, Natural Doctrine, and... Uh, it looks like sort of, sort of a, I guess, a strategy game. It's, you can't really tell too much about it from the trailer, which, you know, I'll let you see little bits and pieces of, just so you get an idea of it. But that was that much on it. There wasn't much really announced on that, except that it's coming for the PS4, the PS3, and the Vita. And I don't believe a release date was announced. Maybe I missed it. But I don't think any release date was announced besides just, just coming out on the, the PS4, 3, and the Vita. Nothing about remote player, cross player, or anything like that. Uh, the next game that's announced for the PS4 is uh, Guilty Gear X Red Sign. It I haven't played. I don't play much fighting games. Uh, well, traditional hardcore fighting games. I play more Smash Brothers. But anyways, Guilty Gear. Uh, I think it used to have more of a sprite-based style, but it's been a while since I've heard anything about it. But this one has more of a cell shaded style, as you can see in the uh, clips. And um, I don't think it released. It was announced for this, or was it? I think it was maybe. Uh, level 5 is uh, making a sort of a, I thought it was a Ninu Kuni sequel at first, but it's not. It's, it has a chibi as as you can see. Uh, Nobuo Yamato is making the music, which already makes me very interested in this game. 
There's also that Project Phoenix game if you wanted to check that out on Kickstarter. Also, the Nubu Oyamatsu making the music. It's some sort of SRPG, but it's not coming out until like 2015. Uh, this game is, uh, is called uh, Wonder Flick, and as you can see, it has like an overworld map. <coughs> oh, I'm sorry, excuse me. And it also looks like it has some sort of a badge esque uh, battle system. Kind of reminds me of The World Ends With You in a sense with the little badges, but I can't tell if it's going to be SRPG or uh, I guess maybe it's going to be like a turn paced RPG. And I think they mentioned they wanted to focus that it's like a game you can play uh, across on many different devices, but that the PS4 would be kind of like the main device for it, but you can play on other devices. And then there was also a quick trailer about some uh, game called Earth Defenses Forces. I think I've heard of these games. They're usually like cheap. Well, not cheap as in bad, but like little cheap uh, games where you kill like a bunch of insects and whatnot. I think one was on the PS3 recently. Earth Defense Forces Armageddon or something maybe, or Insectomageddon or something. But that's it. It just says EDF, EDF, and that's coming on the PlayStation 4. Another game on the PlayStation 4 coming out is a uh, Dream uh, Dream Club Host Girls on Stage. Uh, it comes complemented with uh, Jiggle Physics, and I don't really know. Can't understand. Namco Bandai is publishing a uh, Gundam uh, Warrior game, uh, different from Gundam Breaker, uh, for the PS4. Not much has been announced except it's just called Mobile Suit Gundam, apparently. And then there's this game. And now Sony's going to give the floor to uh, Capcom to talk about uh, Deep Down. Uh, it's a fairly lengthy part. Um, it's a fairly lengthy part of the thing, and I'll uh, go about it. But basically, the uh, game's called Deep Down. Uh, there's an English audio trailer, which I'll upload later. Or maybe I'll, uh, I'll upload later. Um, from the... From the trailer, I had a figure it was going to be kind of like uh, it had some sort of simulation as aspect to it because the way the levels loaded was weird. And lo and behold, apparently the main sort of story takes place in the year 2094 in New York. And the fighting with the dungeon deep down area takes place in 1492. And you sort of transition between these two time periods by reading sort of past monuments and artifacts. Uh, and these artifacts send you into uh, new worlds to solve uh, mysteries. Uh, out of these and also they kept saying the word automatically generate which it doesn't really make mu make much sense so I was thinking maybe they meant it generates it really quickly or it maybe it randomly generates because it's like it automatically generates a level with loot and monsters which you know every game does technically so maybe maybe there's something else I'm not understanding but the way they make it sound like is that uh there's going to be uh <clears throat> I thought it was going to be like random loot and the combat system as you can see it has a uh it's kind of like a Dark Souls combat system, you know, you're not going to be flaying around, jumping up and down here and there. You're going to be one-on-one, -on -one, mono -a mono against creatures, although, mono-mono -a -mono against creatures, although you there will be an online mode, and the focus, they say, is on online. But the way it looks is that most of the game, even though Dark Souls has online, it's that still, if you have this one-on-one uh, -on -one combat, like you're sort of, it has this like realistic feel to it in a sense. You know, you're not going to, like I said, you're not flailing around swords here and there. And like you can see, uh, you can, looks like you can have also uh, multiple weapons equipped, as you can see. And also there's uh, the way it was like, you know, you can see the, like the simple stab animations and whatnot. And there's also a playable demo of a guy playing. Besides this uh, gameplay trailer you're probably seeing, I'll also show that uh, part where the person is playing a little. And then they show a very little part of the online, which I'll show, but it's literally like five seconds of people poking a dragon with their spear thingies. But I'll show that to you guys too. Um, at the at the Tokyo Game Show, they say they will have a uh, playable online. Um, they say they want to announce some more release date, like concrete info, after the PlayStation 4 comes out in Japan. At least some more uh, concrete uh, release date info. Uh, it's going to be exclusive to the PS4, which I guess should have been obvious, but Sony's actually helping uh, develop the game. And it's apparently with a brand new engine called the Pandaray, which I guess means we'll see some more games similar to this, maybe with the online aspects from Capcom, or maybe even other developers if they end up selling it, kind of like the Unreal Engine. Um, anything else I wanted to say? Uh... Yeah, they also said they were going to release more information coming through media outlets. I don't know if that's supposed to be after the PlayStation 4 comes out 
or before the PlayStation 4 comes out, they weren't very clear on that part. But they said that they were going to be more concrete info, like release date sort of stuff, or you know, getting closer to release date after uh, the PlayStation 4 releases in uh, Japan, which um, makes sense really because uh, it's a few months down the line, so they'll have a lot more work done. Uh, they also talk about how the PlayStation Japan, uh, Sony Japan, is going to support also the indies, and they even have the little PS Hard Indie thing. So uh, the indie thing isn't just towards uh, America. Now I don't know if they're going to probably have to localize it, or they're just going to leave it the way it is. I mean, I don't know. But just that was there. They're also releasing the indies for the PlayStation 4 onto uh, Japan. A discount program is also coming from you know America. It's also coming to Japan. Uh, there's only three games announced, which is uh, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, Call of Duty Ghosts, and Destiny Dynasty Warrior 7 Empires Edition are the only ones announced so far that have the PS... If you buy the PS3 version, you can get the PS4 version for a discounted amount. Uh, America has had some more games, I believe, but I think it's also up to publishers to participate. But I'm pretty sure America has some more. Uh, it looks like within the first month that you get, like, you know, when the PlayStation 4 launches in Japan, you'll get WrestleGun and Drive Club for free. I know in America you get Drive Club, the PlayStation Plus Edition for free with PlayStation Plus, obviously, PlayStation Plus Edition. Uh, I don't think WrestleGun, though. I think that may be later on, though, but from what it sounds like, it sounds like that WrestleGun is going to be free immediately. I'm not going to focus on this too much, but they talk about Music Unlimited. It will be more towards, uh, they'll have some more songs towards, you know, the... Tokyo Game Show Japanese audience, P, uh, audience, and also they talk about Video Unlimited. They'll have Western movies, uh, Japanese movies, uh, you know, movies for gamers, movies for family, classics, so on and so forth. They also talk about some uh, app on the PS4 will be Joy Sound Dive 2. I don't really listen to music that much, but I don't know if it's a Japan exclusive sort of thing or if it's uh, you know also in America too. But there's that info too about Joy Sound Dive 2 coming to. The PlayStation 4. But after this Joy Sound Dive 2 thing, there's nothing else really. They just talk about the Vita TV, which I put into my uh, Vita part video, and that's it really. Well, I hope you enjoyed this, and you know, it was easier, and, uh, and I covered, I, I hope I covered everything that it was sort of easier to watch or easier to do than having to read a bunch of different articles, and that I went into enough detail and gave some sort of, you know, helpful slash inquisitive, I don't know, use my brain, I'm really tired, to uh, give some uh, good, uh, Judgment slash opinion slash uh, stirring the pot about some ideas for certain things. Uh, and that's it really. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll be back with some other videos and something else soon. Thanks. Bye.